Australia. The country of Australia. It was initially founded with the assistance of a newly formed British colony in the year of 1778. The labor of the criminals sentenced there was used to develop its natural resources to further expand and enrich the British Empire. Tens of thousands of convicts were transported from England, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales to serve as a labor force for this new British colony. And by the 19th, the mid 19th century, the main six colonies have been granted autonomy and established their own independent parliaments, their traditional system and constitutional government based on English common law. These very same colonies would later concede specific powers to a central authority, a federal government, while retaining their own overall sovereignty and independence. It then developed into the Commonwealth of Australia, which was supposed to operate like a standard liberal democracy with the several rights of its peoples securely protected. Their system of government was, or should I say, it has served them well over the 100 years. However, as we are learning in this country, there is no governmental system that can protect it from the wrath of God. No matter how well designed the system of government is, if the people are faithless, it will drift into a titarian state. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we are discovering a terrible lesson in this nation due to the fact that our most popular churches mimic the Laodicean and Sardis churches that were written and spoken about in the book of Revelations. Apparently, the situation is considerably worse in Australia as they are much further down the line of a Tartarian government, a tyranny system, more worse than this nation. The autocrats of the world have managed to use the flu bug hysteria of the last few years to take away most of the freedoms enjoyed by the people back in Australia, the nation down under. They have been able to accomplish this due to the weak pushback they received from its faithless population. Those who were commended to serve and secure the blessings of liberty as in this nation failed to act to beat back the authoritarians who are bent on enslaving the world and unfortunately those we entrusted to protect our rights as in australia were brought off or easily intimidated by the autocrats of authoritarian groups like the World Economic Forum, the WHEF, has declared war. Thank you for your service. I needed to hear the word today, and God bless you. Amen. Thank I you. Mean, it's just today. The WEF has declared war on humanity. God bless you, everybody. And now it threatens to, to, to enslave it along with the exceptionally large number of useful people that it has purchased. The World Economic Forum has already informed the world that we will own nothing. And we will like it somehow. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question right now. Would you enjoy owning nothing? Pretty sure you would. So I thought. But this is what the future world government is saying that you would enjoy. They say that you would like it. And if we're not more honest, the, they would have reworded their threat by stating that they will own everything. And we will not like it. So throughout the phony pandemic, which enjoys a 98% recovery rate with even greater recovery rates without the autocrats were able to relieve the Australian people of their freedom with hardly a whimper. The world was shocked at the hidden camera footage of forced in internment camps designed to protect the people from, from a virus. Anyone who disobeyed the dictates, the dictators of those in authority were threatened with $5,000 fines, even longer term imprisonment. So in that country, the police were firing pepper spray, rubber bullets at men, women, and children who were protesting a tyranny system that wanted to enforce goofy juice passports. Many people were injured, including one person who was nearly blinded and an elderly woman was knocked to the floor and pepper sprayed in the face. This was all done by the benevolent government that claimed it was protecting the health of every Australian person. Listen up, ladies and gentlemen, because what was happening over there is coming over here. Now, of course, the news system I can't even call it the news media because that's not what it is. The news system worldwide was, which is hopelessly corrupt. It defended the tyrants rather than the weak and innocent citizens of the country. Fortunately, there are still a few reporters who were willing to face the punishment of our elites and post the truth of what is really happening in the world. The number of out outages perpetuated against the civil rights of the people of Australia, of Australia is legion. These include quarantine camps, curfews, CCP, that's if you don't know what that means, Chinese Communist Party, they instituted this style of surveillance in the form of forced facial recognition, geolocation scanning sent to the government by 15 minute text messages. Other restrictions include quarantine signs on people's doors, denying health and other services to those who did not take the goofy juice. They impose restrictions on the quantity of beer that you were allowed to have in order to have it in your home. And let's not forget police brutality. If this were not bad enough, people could only shop within a designated radius from their homes. Can you imagine not being able to go to Walmart because it was too far from your house? That's what was happening in this other country. People were not allowed to exercise. In fact, they were only allowed to exercise for an hour a day outdoors and could only go to work if they were engaged in essential employment. Those who resisted were met with batons, pepper spray, mass arrests, and the majority of the population was critical of resistors 
and show disdain for those who try to stand up for their rights. The same occurred in Canada, just up north here. Those who tried to stand up for basic human decency were brutally shut down. With the consent of the majority, if there is ever a return of any kind of normalcy, the enemies of freedom who ordered these tactics will claim that they were just protecting the people. They will falsely assert that their draconian measurements save lives and that they are proud of their accomplishments. But the question is, ladies and gentlemen, how did a liberal democracy descend so quickly into a titarian state that looked like the Chinese revolution? If we understand the word of God correctly, the answer is actually quite simple. We find God's response in this message. The word of God says, for it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. That's the church. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not preach and live by it? The gospel of God. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the spiritual condition of the people is tied to their houses of worship. If the house of worship becomes decayed, like the temple during is, uh, 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 Ezekiel's time in the Bible, then we can expect a great deal of faithlessness from the population at large. When a nation becomes faithless God allows the nation to fall to wicked leaders that's what you're seeing today that's what you're seeing right now the world is groaning and then replaces that population with other groups of people so many Americans here today Many Americans may have noticed that our population is now being replaced by people who don't belong here. We should consider this fact an act of judgment against us for our faithlessness. When the righteous, read faithful, increase, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, the people groan. That's in the Bible, Proverbs 29 and 2. So it seems that God has passed judgment on the people of Australia and they have lost their civil rights. Those who are in rebellion against God do not deserve freedom, they deserve oppression. Did you hear that correctly? Because I said it correctly. The people of Australia, as in Canada and this country, have been placed by God under a corrupt government that cares nothing for its citizens. You could disagree, sir. That's up to you. Their faithlessness, like ours, is our undoing. So the only way to turn this around is for the people to return to their faith in Christ and his death on the cross for our sins. The populace needs to turn away from the false teachers and contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. It is clear that we are on the verge of no return. It is clear that we are on the verge of exceeding the limits of God's grace. Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, this man that does not like what I'm saying right now. I ask you, Lord, to humble his heart. Is he filled with hate? But he'll be he'll be so quick to say that I'm speaking hate speech. But yet he is he is he is hating on me right now. 
but yet they can get away with it, Lord. But I know, Lord, right now that you will speak to his heart, that you will humble his heart right now in the name of Jesus. We come against this wicked and evil spirit right now. We don't hate the person because the word of God, your word, Lord, it says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality. So I ask you, Lord, right now to have mercy on this man right now. He does not know what he is saying. He does not know what he is doing. I ask you right now, Lord, he claims to be one of yours, but you know, you said it first. You'll know them by their fruits. And so, loving Father, I thank you that you have plans for us that for uh, that is for our good and your glory though we are prone to wander from your path you pursue us you draw us back to you i ask you lord now every every person that has exalted a thought against me that has walked through journal square today i ask you lord to forgive them yes sir Forgive them now. Forgive those who are in this area. Forgive the man that is sitting across from me right now that is cursing me. Lord, for the times that we have strayed, you have promised that your peace, will, which transcends all understanding, will guard our heart, our mind in Christ Jesus. Remind those who are here in this area now that through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we can be at peace with you. Lord, I ask you, let that peace fill this area now. Let that peace fill our lives now. Creator God, I thank you that in Christ I am a new creation. The old has gone and the new is here. My sin is gone and I have been made righteous. Every person that has given their life to Christ, made righteous. Our weakness is gone. We have given our strength to you our shame is gone we have given you our life our chains are gone our hearts have been set free in your great mercy you have given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead let our mouths be filled with praise to you amen brother lord you are our rock, our redeemer. Thank you that you are our strength. You have given me the strength to stand here today and speak your word, our song. You fill our heart with joy. I rejoice in your forgiveness and grace that you have shown me throughout my life. Amen, brother. Now, Lord, I ask you to renew the heart and mind of those who are here. Give them an undivided heart and place a new spirit within those who can hear me now. Remove the heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. I ask you, Lord, to help every single person in Journal Square at the sound of my voice. Help them to follow you through the empowering work of your Holy Spirit, which lives in me through Jesus Christ. I pray. Amen. Amen.